Hello, spooky friends. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha, and welcome to my Bookathon vlog. If you are not familiar with Bookathon, I have linked the announcement video down below. By this time, it will have already passed, but I did just kind of want to let you know what it was about in case you were curious. So, Bookathon is a spooky middle grade readathon that I created back in May of 2022 with my friend Ashley from the Ashley Cardi over on Instagram. We did this as kind of a halfway to Halloween readathon, but also because both of us just really enjoyed spooky middle grade books. This fall, I brought back Bookathon with my friends Gwen from Gwendolyn Kinsinger and Gabby from Gabbing About Books here on YouTube. And I'm really excited to be hosting with these ladies this time around. And I hope to bring back Bookathon again next year as well. So like I mentioned, Bookathon is a spooky middle grade readathon centered around reading spooky middle grade books. I personally have a passion for this genre and age category. I don't love all middle grade books, but I do love this specific category. And I think that there's a lot of merit in this literature. I specifically like spooky middle grade stories that deal with topics of fear and courage and overcoming your fears, being brave. I also like when they kind of tie in things like trauma and grief and different real life issues that can help kids overcome these things in their real lives. While middle grade books are written for the target audience of eight to 12 year olds, I do believe that adults can really take away lots of great lessons from these stories as well. So for Bookathon, we have lots of fun things planned this week. We have reading sprints, games, a book discussion, a movie night, all kinds of fun things. But we also have reading prompts and photo prompts. So I'll go ahead and go through the reading prompts and what I plan to read this week according to each prompt. I am a little bit ambitious with what I want to read. I'm trying to read like the amount of books that I typically read in a month, in a week. So we'll see how that goes. But I do want to go ahead and talk about our first book. And that is going to be The Haunting of Avaline Jones by Phil Hicks. This is actually our group buddy read for Bookathon. So this book follows our main character, Avaline Jones. She's going to visit her aunt in this spooky coastal small town. And while she's there, she comes upon this book of spine tingling stories that seems to have been owned by a girl named Primrose Pemberthy that disappeared all these years ago. Now Avaline is intrigued and she is really interested to find out what happened to Primrose. But as she does this, she is beginning to realize that she may have awakened something and it might be after her now. I'm really excited to get to this one. I have heard so many good things about it and so I'm really excited this is our group pick. So the first photo prompt is to read a book with ghost or ghoul in the title. And so I have a couple of options for that. I would love to read both books for each of the prompts that I have set aside, but we'll just see how the week goes. The first one I have here is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. And this book follows our main character, Luceli Luna. And Luceli Luna is no stranger to ghosts. She actually has a family of ghosts that lives with her. But one day, she and her best friend, Sid, accidentally cast a spell that releases a malicious spirit that may put herself, her family, and her town in danger. The next book I have for that same prompt is Up to No Ghoul by Cullen Bunn and Kat Ferris. So I did read The Ghoul Next Door by the same author last year and recently found out that he had come out with a sequel. So I'm very excited to read this one. The first one is just the story of Gray and how he comes upon a ghoul or the ghoul next door and the friendship that ensues from there. It's equally creepy and sweet and I'm really excited to see how the story continues. Also, this is a graphic novel as well. The next category is to read a book that is set during or around Halloween. So I do have a couple of options for this one as well. And my first option is The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. This is a classic that was written in the 70s. So that does scare me a little bit because I don't know if I'm gonna like it, but I have enjoyed some other children's classics. So I do have high hopes for this one. All I know about it is that it follows this group of kids and they are trying to rescue their best friend Pip. And along the way, they are learning about different Halloween or like, I guess like origins of Halloween or Halloween in different cultures or this time of year in different cultures. And it all centers around this Halloween tree. The next book I have on my list for that same prompt is The Halloween Moon by Joseph Fink. This story is about a girl who loves Halloween, but her parents think she is too old to go trick-or-treating, but she does convince them to let her go out one more time, but she starts to learn that there are weird things happening. When they knock on people's doors, no one's answering, and people that are wearing costumes, they don't really seem like they're costumes at all. So it seems like there's a curse that has been put on this town, and now it is up 
to the main character and her friends to figure out a way to make sure that Halloween is not going to stay here forever. And the last readathon prompt is to read a book with a spooky building on the cover. The first one I have for this one is Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. This is a book about a girl named Margaret and Margaret and her family have just moved to a new house in Washington DC and it seems that this house might be haunted. Her little brother, Michael, has a new best friend and some weird things start happening, some sinister things start happening, and it's up to her to save her family. And the last book that I have is Ravenfall by Kaylin Josephson. This book I've been really excited to read and I think it's about like Celtic or Celtic mythology. Um, there is a girl named Annabella and she has like a psychic family. They own this Ravenfall Inn, which is a magical b, b at the crossroads of the human world and the other world. So I don't know much more about it than that, but it sounds really intriguing. And like I said, I think there's like a monster or something that comes from Celtic or Celtic, however you pronounce that. Um, I've heard it pronounced both ways. So I think it just depends on where you live, but from that mythology. So I've also heard that this gives like maybe Harry Potter vibes or Nevermore vibes. So I'm really excited to get to this one. So one cool thing about Bookathon this year is we actually implemented something new and that is the Bookathon Wheel of Fate. So we actually use this to pick our one book that we were fated to read. We did an Instagram live and anybody that was participating got to show up. We had everybody bring eight books, including the hosts, and we numbered them one to eight. We spin the wheel and then a book was picked for us. So the book that was chosen for me to absolutely read during this readathon was Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. So this is one that I am definitely gonna read this week. So I guess that means that my haunted or spooky building on the cover prompt will absolutely be fulfilled. Will I get to all of these books this week? Who knows, but I know that I have a really fun week ahead. So let's just go ahead and get started. Hello, <laughs> Jovi's here with me. And I just wanted to pop in real quick. And if you hear anything in the background, there it went. Um, I'm about to start The Haunting of Avalon Jones by Phil Hicks. This is our group read for the week. And I'm really excited about this one because I've heard nothing but good things about it. And I just can't believe that I haven't already read it. So I'm hoping that I can maybe finish this in one sitting. So I will let you guys know what I think once I'm finished. Okay, I don't usually do very good with giving updates on while I read books, but holy freaking cow, am I reading a new favorite book or quite possibly my new favorite middle grade book? I very well could be. This book is so atmospheric, so fall. The writing style is freaking incredible. It's so detailed, but like in a good way, like not in a bad way. Well, not that when I say detailed in a bad way, I'm thinking about Stephen King, but like for a middle grade, this is super detailed. And also like the bookshop and Mr. Lieberman and just all the freaking things. I'm obsessed with this book. Like, I, I don't even know. I have no words. I'm just so obsessed. I, I've been seeking for the glory. Say, say, say my name. And I've been trying to wrap my own story. In the search for fame I'm sitting here in this empty room Walls keep tumbling down, down Cause I ain't got nobody I always feel so lonely when the day is through I'm in this Hello everyone, it is day one of Bookathon still And tonight we are doing some reading sprints It'll be me and Gwen and Gabby we're doing them over on my channel, so I'm just getting ready for that. But I thought I would go ahead and wrap up my thoughts on Avalon Jones. Okay, so my thoughts on this are as follows. I really enjoyed this book. I thought that the start of the story was very autumnal and it really brought in a good descriptive atmospheric environment. I loved how this coastal town was both cozy and spooky. I loved all of the different elements and I really love Phil Hicks writing style. I loved getting to know our character Avalon and also her friend Harold. One of my favorite parts of the story was where she went to the bookshop and she got to meet, I think his name was Mr. Lieberman. I don't know if it's Liebman or Lieberman. I always, Lieberman. Okay. 
I loved his character. There were a couple parts that I tabbed in the beginning just that I wanted to bring up during our discussion, which we'll have on Gwen's channel later this week. Just to read you a little bit of what I loved, when you go to Lieberman's Secondhand Books, it says, it was unlike any bookshop Avalon had ever seen. Its windows were thick with grime. The tiny doorway resembled the entrance to a hobbit hole. Water dripped from a broken drain pipe into a small puddle at the base of the steps. Yet there was something intriguing about it too a secret book cave waiting to be explored. So I love that description and I love Mr. Lieberman and all the different things that he said. There were just so many good things about this book. But now I wanna talk a little bit more about my star rating and why I rated this book what I did. So I ended up giving this one four out of five stars and my rating may change over time, but I did sit on this for a full 24 hours before I gave my rating. And at the beginning of the book, it really gave me a five-star feeling. And it was really reminiscent of things that I've read, like Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. But as I got through the book, I found that I was still really enjoying the story, but it wasn't necessarily giving me a five-star feeling. So I started to kind of think about what is it that I enjoy about middle grade spooky books. And as I thought more about it, I realized that this is really more of a classic scary story. If you are somebody who really enjoys just to be scared or a good scary story, and some that, you know, it's just a classic ghost story, this is a great book for you. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any lessons to be learned in this story, but I will say that they weren't as prevalent to me as I would have liked, and I didn't really get any lessons from this story. And I think one thing that I love about spooky middle grade books is when they have a hard-hitting element tied in. A lot of the ones that I've enjoyed either have that or they have like really unique elements. So in small spaces, you have um, our main character, Ollie, her watch is kind of like a communication between her and her mother who has passed. And that's not a spoiler, you find that out pretty quick in her book. But that is something that I found really unique about that story. And then in other books, um, I haven't read this one yet, but the, um, what's it called? Disappearing House by Ali Malininko has a, an aspect of trauma in that that's explored. So I think I like when there's, or, oh, and another one, The Clackety is really good. There are so many things I could point out in that as far as like I could tie it into my faith. There are themes of like fear and love and all these different things. But with this book, I couldn't really find a theme in it. So it's more just like a general scary story, which I absolutely loved, but I think personally, for a middle grade to be five stars for me, it has to be a little bit more and have a little something extra, which the writing could definitely be extra for this one, but I don't know. It just, for right now, it's a four star feeling, which is still great. Four stars for me is I really enjoyed this. This is an amazing book. It just wasn't quite perfect for me. Objectively, I would give this a five star and I see why so many people do. And I definitely think those of you who don't read spooky middle grade or middle grade at all, but you read adult horror or thrillers would really, really love this one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that up and let you guys know what we're doing for Sprints. So like I said, Gwen, Gabby, and I are gonna be on Sprints shortly. So I do need to do a little Instagram um, like shout out saying, hey, don't forget to come join us. But we do have back here the Bookathon wheel. And so I'm gonna use that tonight to pick our ambiance room for our Sprints. I'll probably pick three different ones. So I'll probably change it up throughout if that's not too like strugglesome for me, we'll see. Um, but I think that should be fun. And tonight I'm planning on starting Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. I don't know why, but this book is just really calling to me and I love that cover. So I'm very excited to read this one. It's just a little bit longer than Avalon Jones was. So I'm really excited to pick this one up. And if I happen to finish it, I really would like to go ahead and start Up to No Ghoul by Cullen Bunn and Kat Ferris as well. Because I've really been excited to get to this one, but I wanted to kind of save it to midweek just in case I got kind of slumpy and I was like, I need a graphic novel. So these are my focus for tonight. I will check back in with you later, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for some I want somebody to hold my hand. Cause I got my head in the clouds, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and end it here, but I hope y'all have a good night. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh wait, I forgot to push the button. Reading update. So I did make a dent in Ghost Squad while I was on Sprints last night. So um, this story is kind of reminding me a lot of things like Coco and Encanto. I think that this would make a good Disney movie. So that is definitely what this is reminding me of. But we have Lucelli Luna 
and she lives with her dad and her dad is Dominican and I think her mom was black um, from what I can tell so far. And Lucelli's the one with the curly hair here because she talks about how she has her mom's hair. And so you're getting a little bit, I like the, rest, the representation there of two different ethnicities. And so I'm curious to see like if that's gonna play more into the story too. I know that the author is also Dominican, so I feel like there's a lot of herself in this story, so I'm excited about that. And there is this tree that is in the backyard of Lucelli's house. She lives with her dad, and her mom left when she was younger, and she kind of always hopes that her mom will come back. But this tree allows ghosts in her family to stick around, so she's got like a house full of ghosts, they're all friendly ghosts, but they are like her family members. So it kind of reminds me of Dia de los Muertos in that sense, but all these ghosts are always around. And now there is a threat to her family, to her home, to these ghosts. And that's kind of the story so far. I am about 60 pages in, so not too far. I also want to show you guys the bookmark that I'm using because I just love this stinking bookmark. It's one of my favorites to use this time of year. It says Bewitched at the bottom, but it's this cute little pumpkin carrying the cat. Um, so I read that and then I also read and finished Up to No Ghoul by Colin Bunn and Kat Ferris. You guys know that The Ghoul Next Door was one of my absolute favorite graphic novels that I read. I think it was earlier this year or last year. I think it was last year. Um, this one is the sequel to that one and honestly, like, I gave it three stars so it was good. I still enjoyed it. But the first one was so much better in my opinion. Just setting up the story, setting up the friendship, giving the history. And this has some of those same elements, but I felt like there wasn't as much depth to the story. And I wasn't as big of a fan of the villain in this story. There is going to be, it is like set up for a third book because it ends on a cliffhanger. And so I don't know if it's just going to be a trilogy or if it's going to go from there. But I will be picking up the third book. I just wish that this one would have been as good as the first, but I still thought it was really good. So for today, I'm going to finish ghost squad hopefully and then i don't know which one of these i want to start next so i may do like a try chapter with spirit hunters ravenfall the halloween moon and the halloween tree honestly like i really don't know i really don't know which one i want to read next i want to read whichever one is going to suck me in and get me into it so we'll just have to see i used to spend time with all my friends but who's gonna like me if I'm not there Cause I got my head in the clouds But I'm getting really scared of life Hello, I wanted to give a quick update But before I do, if you didn't already see it Which I'm sure you did um, This is like my official Bookathon mug It's not like really, it's not like Bookathon merch But there's this cute little shop I'll have them linked down in the comments But this says putting the boo in books and I got this mug for me and Gabby and Gwen as kind of a thank you to them for hosting with me. And I just thought it was so cute because it's so like, it's such a bookathon mug. So I'm drinking my coffee and enjoying that, but I wanted to give y'all a reading update. So I did end up finishing Ghost Squad and I'm gonna give it three stars. I thought it was cute, but it's not my favorite book. I thought it was good. So three stars is good for me. But I think just as an adult reading this, I didn't enjoy it as much. There were some 80s pop culture references that I thought were really neat. And I definitely thought that it was a cute story. It reminded me a lot of Coco or Encanto, um, like a Disney movie. But it's just a book that I would have much rather watched versus read it. So that's kind of how I feel about that. Um, I do think people that enjoy things like those movies and Ghostbusters and... Um, cultural. This was a great, like, um, so this is Hispanic Heritage Month, and the main character is part Dominican, and so I thought that was really cool because that kind of helped me read something cultural for the month as well. So, I definitely think that is a really good element. You get a lot of that. I think this is based off of a little bit of Dominican folklore as well, so that's super cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to highlight. Um, but it was a cute story. So I do think that it is a good story for the target age demographic. But for me personally, it wasn't like a favorite spooky middle grade. I do still really love this cover though. But I'm excited to pass this along to one of my book club kiddos. Because I feel like they'll really enjoy it. And then I also read The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. 
and um, I was really excited about this, like really, really, really excited about this, and I gave it one star. There are some classics that I love, most classics I do not, and if I was a kid in, when was this written, the 70s? Let me see. I don't even know when this was written, but I know it's it's been a while. Um, yeah, text copyright 1972. If I was a kid in the 70s and this is what I was handed and this determined whether or not I love to read, I would hate reading. So, I just, I just want to say that. Um, some people have loved it. Just know that this is my personal preference. I don't like this writing style. I thought the story was boring. And I don't even remember what happened or what was going on. I listened to the audiobook on three times speed just to get through it because I just could not. Like, I just did not like it at all. So, one star, worst book I've read so far um, for the readathon. But now I'm going to jump into Spirit Hunters, which Gabby is also reading right now. And so I thought we could chit chat about this. Um, Gwen and I got to chit chat about Ghost Squad since we were both reading that. And now I'm going to get to talk to Gabby about Spirit Hunters. This is actually the book that the wheel, like the Bookathon wheel, picked for me. And so, I'm hoping that this may be like my favorite. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I'm excited to jump into that. But I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a reading update. To trust you and jump down I'll keep my status quo up here Won't let anybody come near I'll fix it on my own Twenty-nine years I've been the same Trying so hard to run from shame But how long can I keep up the pace To fool myself I don't need grace
Balancing on a weary line Too scared to trust you and jump down I'll keep my status quo up here Won't let anybody come near I'll fix it on my own Twenty-nine years I've been the same Trying so hard to run from shame But how long can I keep up the pace To fool myself I don't need grace Will you be there to catch my fall Need to be sure you'll hear my call Darkness around me and I don't know why It's so hard to let go Why it's so hard to let go Why I wasted my time And I'll say I didn't know better But the truth is I was weak and scattered Afraid of the blame Twenty-nine years I've been the same Trying so hard to run from shame And I will not keep up the pace To fool myself I don't need grace Let me mute myself. <laughs> I think I got it. I think oh. I got it. Oh no, say it again. Uh, no, I want one more try. Okay, I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I have you big, so I can't see like the comments either. I'm really trying. Okay. Okay. So what's your guess? Okay. I wrote full moon. And they said it in the comments. Yes. Hey, I didn't get that it. That was it. Full moon. Oh, I got that one. I didn't. <laughs> All right. Wait, don't show it yet. I'm, I'm not, giving I'm them not. time in the comments oh. to say. <laughs> You want me to? I'll say it one more time. Say it one more time. Oh. <laughs> I try to get everyone to see me. I play, play, play my games. But I just end up looking like a showcase. I have myself to blame. I'm sitting here in this empty room. Hello, friends. Don't mind the ambiance in the background. I feel like we're just gonna get ambiance for the video. So if you hear birds or like rustling leaves or anything, it's an ambiance room. Um, but I did want to let you guys know that I started at Spirit Hunters and we did sprints and games and everything. You guys saw that I was reading this. So I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of an update. I am currently 114 pages, 10 chapters in. So I'm almost halfway through, but um, this is probably, the scariest middle grade book and one of the scariest books I've ever read. So for those of you out there who read horror or thriller books, this might be your cup of tea because this is a haunting story. It follows our main character Harper and she and her family have just moved into this new home that seems to be haunted and there's people getting hurt and there's like stuff happening and I'm like, this is a middle grade, are you kidding me? So. I don't know if this is a middle grade that I would necessarily recommend for middle grade because it's very scary and haunting. So I will say that, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to rate it yet because like I said, it is kind of scaring me and I'm like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? But I don't know. I would just like to say that halfway through this book, this is my feelings. And yeah, I will let y'all know whenever I finish it. I'm hoping to finish it today, but we shall see. We do have our movie watch party tonight and we're watching The Curse of Bridge Hollow over on Netflix. So we're gonna be chatting about that in the Discord and I'm really excited for that. 
And then tomorrow we have our book club discussion for Avalon Jones. So it's been a great week so far, but I wanted to give you guys an update on my current reading. So if I finish Spirit Hunters by the end of the week, which I should finish it today, hopefully, then I will have completed all the prompts. So even if I don't get to the last two books that I hope to get to, I will still have completed the prompts. Walls keep tumbling down, down. Cause I ain't got nobody so lonely when the day is through I'm in the spotlight Not home till midnight I want somebody To hold my hand Cause I Got my head in the clouds But I'm getting really scared of heart I used to spend time With all my friends But who's gonna like me If I'm not there Cause I Clouds, but I'm getting really scared of height. Oh, 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 I'm getting really scared of height. Oh my gosh, our movie night last night was so much fun. We ended up watching The Curse of Bridge Hollow, which just came out on Friday, October 14th. So we got to watch it like a day after it came out. And I think that was the perfect movie to watch. It's not necessarily middle grade, but it's TV 14 and it was so fun. It was just a great movie to watch. It was so hilarious. And I think it's a little bit hokey, but it was just really, really, oh, there goes the sun. But it was a really, really good movie to watch. I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, we had an absolute blast talking about it in the Discord. Oh my word, it was just an amazing time. Okay, I have finished Spirit Hunters and I'm here to update you with my thoughts. This is a book that has taken me a minute to sit on. And I think it's just because I have like conflicting thoughts. So I'm not sure if this is gonna come out like completely well, but we're just gonna hope that it does because I don't really know how to explain it. So this book, <sighs> here we go. This book sucked me in from the very beginning. The writing in this was really good. I was very invested in the story and invested in the characters. I cared a lot about them and I think this was very well done. One of the things that really got me about this book was actually how scary it was. And there are a couple of things in my life that feel a little bit like unnerving to me. And I'm not going to mention both of them, but I will say one of those things is stories like this. So while I do like some ghosty stories and some haunting stories, I like a specific kind. And I think this one I struggled with, with just like certain things like, and this isn't going to make sense. That's why I'm like struggling. So I've read books like My Best Friend's Exorcism, which deals with demonic possession and it kind of pokes fun at it. So that I can deal with because it like, I don't know how to explain this. This is different. This is just really scary. All of the things that like, I don't like about this subject or about ghosts or about hauntings and stuff, this book does. So it was very unnerving for me to read and I don't wanna go into too much detail because I don't wanna spoil it, but if you read it, then you'll know. Um, there were parts of this book that I liked, there were parts that I didn't, but when I say I didn't like them, it was just because they made me scared or unnerved. <laughs> so I cannot rate this book low because I was unnerved because I think that was kind of the purpose of this book. I will say that I would be hesitant to hand this to a middle grader. I feel like the only thing that made this middle grade was that it dealt with kids and like a whiny little boy. But other than that, I feel like this should have been like young adult or adult because I think the scare factor in this is extreme. And I know that I'm one of those people that you will hear me say a lot, you know, if a kid wants to read a scary book, let them read a scary book. And I am still for that. But I think again, like I've mentioned before, I don't like to read just a book that's scary. I want it to have a meaning or a purpose behind it. And I think if this does have a purpose behind it, it's being diverse. And I think that's great. And that's very much needed. There is Korean and Jamaican representation in this book. The main character is Korean. Um, her best friend is Jamaican. There's also mentions of like shamanism, which is a Korean um, kind of spiritual belief system. I don't really know how to explain that. If you're interested, look it up. But shamanism is listed in here. Buddhism is mentioned in here. Catholicism is mentioned in here. So this is definitely a diverse book. So that is one thing that it has going for it. But as far as a story being scary just for the sake of being scary versus a story that is scary and has a really good lesson around it, I think this one is just scary for the sake of being scary. And so as you all know, that is something that makes it really hard for me to rate. But I will say this. 
this was a very well-developed story. It was very thorough. It was very good. Like I said, it sucked me in. And I think the fact that it sucked me in and made me unnerved and scared is every reason to give this book five stars. So, this is not a book that I'm going to continue in the series with. This is not a book that I want to keep. And I know that's confusing to people, but I know my limits and this is my limit. <laughs> so, I loved this, but I can't put this stuff in my brain, if that makes sense. Like, I just don't feel like it's healthy for me to put this stuff in my brain. So, I will say this is probably my favorite book that I read this week because it made me feel all the things. It sucked me in. I was very invested and yeah, I felt all the things. So, I would say this is my favorite book that I've read this week, but I cannot keep it and I cannot continue in the series. So, hopefully some of you out there understand that, but I will say that. I think if you like things like Insidious, which I have seen that movie. I know you guys know that I don't watch scary movies, but I have seen that one. I don't plan to watch any more of it, and I did not like, it was a good movie, but like, oh, I can't. I can't do it. But if you like Insidious, if you like things like Ghost Whisperer, um, I think you might like this book. So, if those things pique your interest, definitely pick this one up. I think if you are an adult who likes horror and thrillers and scary things, you will probably really enjoy this one. So, I will rate this five out of five stars. Hopefully, all of my thoughts made sense, but this was definitely a wild ride. Yeah, really it good. makes me so happy that not only do we pick a great book and that most everybody loved it, uh, but that, like, I feel like so many other people discovered spooky middle grade or found a new favorite yeah. or found a buddy to talk to about books with that's always like my favorite thing about readathons as well um yeah absolutely it was all this was Keisha's brainchild Keisha. Gabby and I were just back here backing her up <laughs> <laughs> the best that we could oh I'm so glad you guys had so much fun okay y'all that's it Spookathon is over and it is so bittersweet. I simultaneously feel like the week was slow, but also that like Bookathon went by so fast. Also, please ignore like the little humps in my hair. This is headphone hair. I have come accustomed to it, so we're going to ignore that. Um, but I did want to quickly wrap up the books and Jovi's joining me here. Are you joining Mama for Bookathon? Yeah, did you have fun? Did you get all the spooky books read with Mama? Yeah, was it fun? Did you get scared? Did you get scared? <laughs> I love that I have such an attentive dog. Okay, so really quickly, I want to talk about the books that I read this week. So the first book that I read was our buddy read, and that was The Haunting of Avalon Jones by Phil Hicks. And I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. It wasn't quite a five star for me, like I mentioned before, just because I wanted a little bit more depth to it versus it just being a scary story. Um, so I did just give it four stars, but I think this is a great book and a great book for people who maybe are not currently into spooky middle grade or middle grade books in general to pick this up because I think that a lot of people would really enjoy it. And then next I started Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. I ended up giving this one three stars. I think it was a good book. I think for me it was probably a two star, like it was okay. But overall, I think this was a good book. I think that it had really great representation. I also think that the story was really cute and fun and great for people who like Disney movies like Coco and Encanto and maybe even a little bit of Ghostbusters. I think this is a great book for the age demographic. So definitely keep that in mind. Then I read Up to No Ghoul by Cullen Bunn and Kat Ferris and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it three stars. Um, it wasn't as good as The Ghoul Next Door to me. It just didn't have the depth as much as the first story did. The first one just really gripped my heart. And this one was just okay for me. I wasn't a huge fan of the villain. Then I read The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. And this one I rated one star. It was not good in my opinion. It is a classic. It was written in the 70s. And I have read books that were older than that. Like The Secret Garden was written in like 1910 or 11 or something like that. And it read better then this one, I really don't even know what was going on, and it just was not enjoyable for me at all, even with the audiobook. So, the last book that I read was Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. This was my favorite book that I read so far. It's the one that scared me the most, but I obviously have conflicting feelings on it, just because of the fact that it just unnerved me a little bit. But I do think this was very, very well written. The um, diversity in this book was peak, like just on point, perfect, great, 
Love that about it. Um, I think that most people who like a good ghost story and a good haunting story would really like this one. And then I actually, unfortunately, did not get to the Halloween moon or Ravenfall, which I really wanted to because there were so many people that read both of these books during the readathon that were telling me that they were so good and that I would love them. So I need to read these before October is over with. So hopefully you will see them in my wrap up. So, with all that being said, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated in Bookathon. This was the second round of Bookathon, and I really enjoyed being able to have Gabby and Gwen as my co host We had an absolute blast planning all the content and doing all the things. It was definitely a busy week, but it was a week that I will never forget. And also, I think the thing that meant the most to me during this readathon is that People participated that had never read middle grade or never read spooky middle grade before. And I think that just really hit with me because there were so many people that discovered it for the first time and really loved it. And I'm just like, yes, this is what I've been trying to tell everyone. There is a middle grade book out there for everyone and there's something that you can enjoy. You just have to find the right one. So I hope that all of you out there that did participate found a newfound love for middle grade or specifically spooky middle grade books. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated, to everyone who maybe didn't participate but still supported the readathon and shared about it. You guys just literally made this the best that it could have been. I'm so thankful for y'all and I'm so thankful for my co-hosts and just for this whole readathon. It just makes me happy. Like, I'm literally overjoyed at the turnout. So, we will be doing Bookathon again next year. So, if you remember, the first time that I did Bookathon was in May for Halfway to Halloween. And I did that with Ashley from the Ashley Cardi over on Instagram. And we will be bringing Bookathon back in May 2023. So, I hope that you guys are excited to participate again then. But for now, I will sign off. So, spooky friends, I hope you've enjoyed everything. If you participated and enjoyed Bookathon, make sure to leave an orange heart down below. If you made it to the end of this video, because I know it was a long one, please go ahead and leave me a little ghosty too. I love you all so, so much. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, friends.